Hello everyone, I'm Kimona Sotirjos and I'm a software engineer at Arikto and also a lead at the Notebooks and Manifest Working Group and also the release manager for Kubeflow 1.4. And I'm Andre Vilishkevich. I'm a social engineer in Cisco, and I'm the lead of AutoML and training working group in Kubeflow. And we're really excited that we are part of the Kubernetes AI Day, and thank you for joining our talk. And today we're going to talk about how we went around developing and scaling our Kubeflow's web applications. But before we start actually discussing about the applications, we'll need to learn a little bit more about the users. And in our case, it's an entire ML team with which will have different roles that will need to play together to have an efficient workflow. We'll have the data engineers that will be handling the initial st states of the data. We'll have data scientists as well as ML engineers who will be taking this data, analyzing, creating the models, training them in a distributed fashion. And then we'll also have DevOps because we're Kubernetes who will be helping along the process and also taking care of model serving. And all of this will need to be able to happen in one cohesive platform with some intuitive UIs. And in this presentation, we're going to see how did we go around with Kubeflow to build such a platform that will have these three pillars, which is team isolation, scalability, and user experience. So the first one is team isolation. And since we are building a platform on top of, on top of Kubernetes, the solution here is we only rely in namespace isolation, by, uh, which means that different users and teams will have their own namespaces and they will, they will be using RBAC, which is Kubernetes native, to control who, what entities will have access to which resources. But let's take it one step higher and see how can it work from a user's perspective when they're at their browser. A user will just send a request, for example, they would like to delete a notebook, to a web application living in the Kubeflow namespace. And then the web application will perform an action like delete the actual notebook on behalf of the user with the permission it, it has and with its own service account. But here there comes the first initial question, which is how can I ensure there's namespace isolation and RBAC is being respected if the web app has permission and can do anything it wants? Well, the answer here is with subject access reviews. Subject access reviews the same mechanism that kubectl, OAuth, CanI is using under the hood in which we can ask Kubernetes if a user has permissions to make an action on top of an object in the cluster. So the backend can create the subject access review and be sure that the user is indeed authorized by RBAC to do the action they want. But this also then raises the next question, which is, okay, how can the web app know which user is actually connected and doing the request? The answer, the answer here is with HTTP headers. The web apps will expect that a specific authentication mechanism, whether this is, for example, Google IAP, will be in front of the cluster and ensuring that there is an authenticated user and setting, the, setting this user identity into specific headers. And to get this all together, we can also do it by a complete open source solution by using DEX. So a user will be connected to Istio's ingress, ingress gateway which will be working alongside DEX for OIDC and ensuring an authenticated user is doing all of the actions with the web apps in an, uh, by respecting RBAC. So the three things we need, you need to remember here is that we have namespace isolations for users and teams. We have always have authenticated users and we are using subject access reviews to ensure we, re, uh, we comply with Kubernetes RBAC. The next part is scalability. Well, the cheat solution, the cheat solution here, since we're at KubeCon, is we rely on Kubernetes for a lot of scalability. For example, and this has to do uh, both for the actual ML workflows as well as the web the web applications. If we have a lot of requests, then we just spin up more pods for our web apps, which are restful. But at this point, I'd like to also discuss the scalability point of view from the web apps and what we had to do to actually scale our web apps when we have hundreds of requests coming from hundreds of users that want to do things on top of thousands of Kubernetes objects. So how can we do this efficiently? I'll just focus on how can we actually keep on fetching the data and have an auto refresh mechanism here. And what we currently do is exponential polling. So we ask for new data every one, two, four, eight seconds, as long as the data is stale. But once we have new data, then we reset the counter and start asking more frequently. 
but this has some drawbacks like the user might, might wait even 32 seconds if there's no activity on the on the resources on the list of objects or on the other hand if uh, there's a sudden change then all of the hundreds of users will be asking for the same da data with uh, like consecutive requests which can result in a lot of load one future improvement we've considered here is to keep the simple polling mechanism every a request every four seconds for example but the request will be a simple head request and will, it will be getting only the resource version of the latest list object in kubernetes and only once the resource version is changed then the then the ui will do a get request to get the latest data and we can even do a slightly better optimization here because even in that case we might be still getting thousands of objects in one request but we can actually use kubernetes api chunking to cut these requests into smaller pieces so that the load is less on the on all of the components and we can have data more fastly to the browser we've also evaluated other solutions like web sockets or server side events but since we, we are a little bit tight on time we can discuss more on this on our q a session and last but not least is the user experience part and it's really important for us because in kubeflow our targeted users while they are working on top of Kubernetes, they do not have experience of Kubernetes or we cannot assume that they have. So our users, the ML scientists, only know how to do their specific uh, ML tasks and user algorithms, but not. But we cannot expect them to be able to kubectl logs to see the logs or kubectl describe if something goes wrong in order and be able to debug it. So our web applications will, will need to be able to provide all of this information in a user-friendly way, while at the same time layering this information so that the more machine learning information is exposed to the user first, and the more advanced Kubernetes concepts are also shown, but kept for an advanced user. But because I can just describe a, a UX with words, um, you will need to actually see what we talk about. And in order to see it, you'll also need to understand what are the requirements of an ML scientist and what do they actually need from such a platform? And to further understand this, uh, Andre is going to walk you through how can uh, an, what does an ML scientist do and specifically how can they do auto ML and how can they do it on top of Kubernetes and with Kubeflow. So Andre, back to you. Thank you, Kamanos. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, what is AutoML and how do we solve this problem in Kubeflow. So AutoML is the process of automation machine learning tasks. And especially here in this uh, page, you can see the landscape for AutoML uh, where users can provide the training data in the configuration space, uh, similar to the search space uh, description. A search space can be uh, differently, uh, depends on your task. So it can be architecture, it can be hyperparameters, it can be features, and all this configuration you can pass to your optimizers based on an algorithm for example, based optimization or a neural architecture search algorithms, and then optimizer provides a configuration to you. you. Then we yeah. passing this configuration to the model with the test data and push this model to production. Uh, covering AutoML covers a lot of different aspects such as feature engineering, model compression, neural architecture search, hyperparameter tuning, and we try to adopt all of these features in cloud native way in Kubeflow. So how do we solve this in Kubeflow? We have a project called Kerib which is Kubernetes native open source platform for AutoML. And this project includes in Kubeflow distribution. So which is a very good part of this project since it is built on top of the Kubernetes. It is agnostic to machine learning frameworks and programming languages. Uh, so you can tune your hyperparameters in any languages. And also we uh, have in place support for any sort of the Kubernetes CRD. So KDIP can be used as the orchestrator on top of your Kubernetes customer resources. Also, we support um, famous optimization frameworks such as Hyperopt, Optuna, SKOpt, and many more. We continually evaluating with supporting new algorithms. And also our researchers can use our platform to develop and evaluate new optimal algorithms since this platform is um, language agnostic. And also, uh, since it's built on top of Kubernetes, uh, we can deploy KDIP on local uh, or, or public or private cloud. And also, we have a native integration with Kubeflow components such as notebooks, pipelines, and training operators. Going to KDIP architecture, um, 
It's quite straightforward. Uh, since KDIP has the Kubernetes customer source, we have three different controllers. Uh, one is uh, experiment controller, which is eventually takes the user experiment YAML and try to proceed this YAML, uh, parse the information from the user needs. Then we have a suggestion controller, which is received the search step base uh, description from experiment and also algorithm and creates the algorithm service when it's eventually the ultimate algorithm is running. Our ultimate algorithm can produce the hyperparameters or a new architecture based on the needs. And then we have a trial controller. Trial controller just spawns the trials where the actual training job is running. And since trial is an abstraction, can be any, to any type of training job, we can define even the taxon pipeline or even the Argo workflow in our trials. And then we, uh, our KDP is able to actually parse the training results from the trials. And then we send this metrics to the DB and then the, we send the evaluation metrics back to the suggestion service and the produce new hyperparameters. Speaking about the KDP, one of the experiment, one, one, one of the example of our experiment, here you can see the YAML structure. So our users define the experiment budget with the specific trial information, then they define objective, uh, then they define an algorithm, and then they define the search space. We will see the more information in the demo that I will show you later. And here you can see the trial template. And since, as I said before, trial can be anything, uh, you can define your uh, specific specification here for your customer source. Uh, you can define the whole Argo workflow here, and you can uh, set up the your experiment with the pre-processing step, with post-processing step. So it's very powerful if you want to have like more um, very like some uh, sophisticated hyperparameter tuning examples. And with this, with that said, I will jump directly to our demo that we show all of the UIs that we built in Kubeflow that Kamonos mentioned before. And I will just uh, show how AutoML is working in uh, Kubeflow. So this is the Kubeflow central dashboard. I think all of you are familiar with this central dashboard because we are um, trying to uh, to show every time our, our UI. And here uh, the DevOps engineers can all, always like see the C CPU utilization, see the pod CPU utilization, see all of the uh, monitoring information that they want to uh, they want to reach from the, the, the scientist team. Of course, UI is split across the namespace. So you can, as Kamonos mentioned before, you can easily uh, adopt this UI for your huge ML team uh, with namespace isolation and everything will be work. So uh, here you can see you can see the notebooks UI where you can define the notebook. You can choose the images from the predefined images. You can also define the CPU, GPU, uh, the volume where you can where you want, want to take your data. And in the meantime, once you create the notebook, you, you can click the connect, and you will be in the familiar Jupyter Lab environment, uh, which is everything built on top of the cloud. So this is very powerful because you can run the predictions, you can run the pipelines. Uh, with your notebook, you can run um, the training operators or KDF experiment. Then you can also create the tensor board using our Kubeflow UI. Uh, this tensor board also a very powerful tool for the data scientists to be able to develop uh, algorithms uh, in cloud native way. And you can also uh, deploy your own tensor boards. We can have also like UI for the volumes where you can monitor the volumes. Uh, and also we have the pipelines UI, uh, which is basically the Kubeflow pipelines um, uh, project. And also here you can see all of your pipelines and pipeline runs, uh, recurrent runs, and uh, all of the functionality from the KFP. And then if we jump to KDP experiment, uh, I will try to submit new experiment to show how does work from the, uh, from the UI perspective. So first of all, we just need to define the name of the experiments. We will use the Bayesian optimization for this demo. Uh, this is the budget that I mentioned before. So you can define the, the number of trials that you want to you run. Then you define the objective with your metrics that you want to tune. You can also define the, all of the metrics that you want to uh, also parse from the training containers. Then you select the search algorithms. We have a lot of algorithms that KDIP supports. Uh, we will choose the Bayesian optimization for this demo, but you can also choose the uh, list of the algorithms from the NAS as well. Uh, so let, let's just select the Bayesian optimization. Here you can see the algorithm settings, uh, which also user can modify and uh, adopt for their needs. 
Also, this is the aristotic section, uh, which can help you to avoid overfitting and very powerful. And you definitely need to use this in your hyperparameter tuning experiment. But for this experiment, we just uh, simply run one algorithm. And this is the search space. Uh, so in this example, we will tune learning rate, uh, number number of players, and optimizer. Also, of course, you can add the new parameters uh, with the particular distribution. We support like integer, double, discrete, or categorical parameters. You can edit the current parameter. You can delete them. Um, and you can define like your search space for the experiment. For the metrics collector, we support, uh, this is the list of the supported metrics collector from the KD. We will use STD out. And this is the trial template. So eventually you, we will use the default settings. So we are not going to change the, any, uh, any information from here. Uh, this is a template that's where our training process uh, will be run. And we are going to tune a learning rate, number of players and the optimizer. So we just need to define the reference for the particular parameters. And for the advanced user, we have a button which just produce the whole Kubernetes YAML structure where you can define the object metadata. You can define some APIs parameters, which just the forms that don't support and uh, which these provide like more functionality for the uh, more like Kubernetes uh, native way. So once this experiment is running, you can see that some of the experiments um, have been created before. You can see the time when it was created. You can see the number of successful trials, the optimal trials. Also, you will see the parameters that the best trial produce. And if we click to the particular example, you will see this plot, which actually introduced all of the all of the distribution between different hyperparameters, all of the results and these parameters achieved. And also here at the bottom, you will see the overview of the experiment with, this, with the current status, with the best trial, with the trial parameters, uh, and also the current experiment conditions uh, that experiment is met. If you click to the trials page, you will see that, that all of the trials that a current experiment uh, was, um, uh, uh, was running. And if you click to the particular trial, we will see the distributions, uh, sorry, the, the metrics that our, uh, the metrics that the Katip just collected. And you can always like monitor what's happening with, with your metrics in a particular trial. And also, which is very powerful, we highlight the best trial. And uh, you can see the result with this best trial by clicking on, on the name. Of course, we have like more the uh, more discrete details with uh, with with the experiment. So it's like, for example, like objective trials, parameters, and uh, as I said before, for the Kubernetes uh, for Kubernetes user, they can always see the YAML structure for the experiments uh, with all the required information. I think our experiment is running. We were not going to wait, but uh, here you can see in the lifetime how the parameters will be changed, will be changing. And also you can see which trials are currently running and which trials are, uh, uh, was, uh, were succeeded. So, and uh, last but not the least, I just want to briefly show the models UI, which is related to KF serving. And here I, I already like deployed one inference to show which like kind of the uh, parameters you will see. So this is the one inference that I deployed before. And if we click to this inference, you will also see the overview of the inference, uh, the current statuses of this inference. You can see the details of this uh, KF serving uh, instance. You can see the logs from the KF serving, and you can, which is like very powerful. You can see the metrics. So this metrics produced uh, by Grafana, and we can see what is the current status for the for our like um, inference from the KF serving side. And for example, uh, if I try to if I try to invoke this service with some of the predictions, uh, yeah, this is just a simple MNIST example, and I try to invoke the service with the predictions, we will see that uh, the metrics uh, should be actually changed, and so we will see the information that uh, that actually uh, Grafana produced. So yeah, as we can see here, the request. Uh, has been come and uh, we will see like the, uh, the, uh, the DevOps engineers can just monitor this page uh, by doing this analysis. And with that said, uh, if, if you have any questions regarding the demo, we'll just feel free to, to just answer in the Q&A session because we don't have much time right now, but I will jump back to our presentation. And, uh, and the last, but very important thing that I really want to mention about the, our community. 
uh, we're growing really very fast. We have more than 12,000 commits and uh, 20,000 GitHub stars on Kubeflow, which is very exciting. And we, we, we want to uh, say thank you so much for our contributions. Um, as uh, me and Camonis, we're part of the AutoML and Notebook Working Group, uh, really want to uh, we want from you to attend our working group meetings. We have our like regular meetings every week. Please join our Slack channels that we, that, that we mentioned here. Uh, if you're using Kerib uh, in production, please update the adopters list. This will be very valuable for us to, you know, to make the connection for, with the users. Also, please feel free to check our latest presentations with the demos and with our uh, uh, latest summits. Also, if you want to contribute, uh, please feel free to follow the developer guide, the help wanted issue, and submit the new proposals. And which is uh, very important, please feel free to check our roadmaps for AutoML and for Kubeflow in 2021. And with that said, thank you so much for listening to us today. Uh, we're happy to answer all of your questions.